All right, I've got a Photoshop tutorial for you where we're going to show you kind of the initial techniques to create a design such as this. And it's a command in Photoshop that once you start using it, I find it highly addictive and a lot of fun to use in designs. So let's go ahead and jump in and I'll show you how this works. So for this tutorial though, the first thing you want to do is go under Edit, Preferences, and let's make sure that our cursors are set up in a, in a way that's easier to use. So in cursor setup, I have, for painting cursors, I have a normal brush tip selected. And important, an, an important uh, detail down here is also to have show crosshair and brush tip. For other cursors, you want to have it set to precise. So we can see a crosshair and we can see specifically where the, the, the center point of our tools are at all times. So if you have that set, click OK. Now create a new document, and I have a document open here at 10 inches by 10 inches height and width at 300 dpi. And it's kind of important for these that you have a very high resolution set because we want to get into a good amount of detail. So let's go ahead and create a couple of guides to find our center point of the document. So go to View, New Guide, and for the you can select either one first. Let's do horizontal orientation first. And for position, let's select 50%. So I punch in 50%. Let's do the same thing. View, new guide. But this time, let's select the vertical orientation. And for position, punch in 50%. Now let's go ahead and go to view, lock guides. Make sure those are on. And this will make sure that we always know where the center of our document is. And we can easily see uh, where our rotation point is going to be because we're going to be using we're going to be rotating along the center here So I'm going to go ahead and fill this Background with a color and I'm going to use this real dark blue that I've got And on a PC you can simply uh, press control and delete To fill with the background color on a Mac. I think it's also I think it's command delete something like that And let's create a new layer now let's start kind of building a, let's do a kind of a circle and a ring on top of this. So I'm going to select a new color that we want our rings to be. And let's do kind of a bluish, maybe something like that. Hit OK. I'm also going to set that as my background by switching these. And with our elliptical marquee tool, just go to the center point of your document and see these crosshairs start to come in handy. In holding control and shift, drag out a circle. And let's go ahead and, and press control delete to fill and control D to deselect. And let's just build kind of a little start point to use here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give this a stroke. So under the effects palette, I'm going to select stroke. And the stroke color is actually going to be the same color as our fill. So I'm just going to take a swatch like so. And for blending options, click on blending options and set the fill opacity to zero. Now if we go back to the stroke, we can set the size. Eh, something like that. Position is inside. And click OK. Now let's create a new layer on top of that and use our elliptical marquee tool once again and do the same process and this is just kind of a nice little detail just to get you going so let's create another selection in the middle but not up to the edge and control delete to fill and this is kind of a cool little start point all right now here's where the the, the magic comes in <laughs> let's create a new layer first thing let's go to our brush tool and this is kind of my workflow that I like to do is I like to just select the brush tool and then uh, with a Mac I think it's a, a two finger click or with the PC you can just right click and let's look at our brush so the size looks good six pixels hardness 100 percent so let's just click off of there now let's go to our pen tool and make sure that it's set to path and let's draw out kind of a little shape here so let's start with kind of a Let's do kind of a curly line. So I'm going to just kind of create a line. And I want this shape to kind of overlap itself. So I'm going to come back down here 
and end it right at the center point of our document. I think that looks kind of cool. All right. So now right click. Well, I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and, and set the foreground color that we want to use. I'm going to use the same blue for now. Right click on your line with the pen tool selected and select stroke path. Now we want the tool to be brush because we already know that it's a six, pi six pixel uh, hard brush. Simulate pressure should be off and click OK. All right, I'm going to hit enter once to get rid of our path. And we have kind of this curly line here. Now here's where the fun comes in. I'm going to go ahead and, and select my arrow tool and I'm going to press Control, Alt, and the letter T. Now you'll see the, the transform bounding box come on, but what is also happening here is Photoshop is going to create a duplicate layer of whatever we do to this element. So first thing you want to do is grab the rotation point and let's drag it down to the center of our document down here. All right. Now up at the top in CS6 and CS4 and 5, I'm pretty sure you have all of these uh, tools and controls you can use here to set the the uh, sizing and scale. We want to set rotation. So let's set it to 5. We're also picking a number that's easily divisible by 360 because we're going to go all the way around the center point of this circle. So as you can see, once I changed the rotation angle, the Photoshop made a duplicate of our original layer and has set this new layer to that angle. So let's hit enter twice there and we've created a duplicate layer. Now here's where the fun part comes in. I'm going to zoom out once so you can see this whole thing happening. Now if you hold down Control, Alt, Shift and, the, and press the letter T, Photoshop will, will continue to make a duplicate layer with the specifications that we set. So it's going to create another layer of the one before it with the rotation set to five degrees and it's going to keep using the center point, the rotation point that we set on that original element. So you can press this, press T, keep holding down those those uh, buttons, control, shift, and alt. And you can go all the way around like this and start creating some very cool effects. All the way till you get back up and you'll see that we won't overlap funny and we get a perfect spacing of our lines here. So I'm going to go ahead and holding shift to my layer palette here. I'm going to select all these layers because we just created a whole bunch of new layers. And I'm going to press control E to merge those all together. There we go. So I'm going to hide the guides real quick by control semicolon. And you can make some very, very cool shapes like this and do a lot of different things with it. And this is the building blocks to what I did with something like this earlier, as you can see. So you can take groups of shapes, you can do lines, you can do all sorts of stuff and get some really intricate line work and with some masking effects, you can really pull this off. So for instance, how I created this ring here, I'm going to show you simply this is how you do it. So control semicolon again to turn our guides on. Now this layer that we just created, let's go ahead and use our circular marquee tool. And from the center point again, hold control and shift and drag out a selection, something like this. Now select inverse. And on that layer, let's simply hit our mask masking icon down here like so. So if you do the same process and you hold down Alt and Shift from the center point, drag out another circle that we want the edge of our band to end at, just like so. Select, Inverse, and now that we're on the mask, let's go ahead and fill this with black because black is going to knock out what we don't want to see. So there you go. This is how you start creating those banding effects. And you can easily do things like duplicate this layer, control J, J control T, and holding Alt and Shift, you can scale it down against the center point as well. 
just like so. So you can get some very, very intricate designs. Uh, you can do new paths and get uh, different shapes working. And it does some very, very cool stuff. So that's the, the first kind of tutorial where we're part of the tutorial where we're showing basic shapes. Now let me show you using images. So I'm going to go ahead and group all of these objects and hide them. Now let's play with the photo. Now here's an example of something I did before. And you can get very, very intricate and do some very cool stuff. And this is using a mixture of about six different stock photos. So, and I've just simply transformed some and overlapped others. But let me show you how, how to kind of do, how to get an effect like this started. So I've got this image that I found on Shutterstock. And it's a pretty big image. And you can see I was already playing with it before. But what we want to do is take a selection of this image that we want to create kind of an effect out of. So take your elliptical tool, marquee tool, and let's just kind of select around an edge and get some of these nice colors in here. And it doesn't have to be precise by any means. So let's go ahead and once we have kind of a selection here, this is a, a huge file that I've got. This is 9,000 pixels wide. So I'm going to I'm going to select and modify and feather this one and 50 pixels is about right so I'm gonna hit return now you can use any image you want uh, things like smoke and nebulas and galaxies and skies and stuff like that seem to work pretty cool but again you can use pretty much any photo you want so I'm gonna press control C I'm gonna take a, a, a copy of that selection and come back to our original document Control semicolon to turn our guides back on and control V to paste our selection in here. All right, so since we want to get this to pretty much transition all the way around in a circle very, very seamlessly and blend pretty well, let's go ahead and we're going to take a chunk of this image again. So a very manual method on how to do this is you want to select your line tool and you want to make sure that it's set to shape and for the fill color let's choose red because it's easy to see and the weight can be two pixels we're just going to make kind of a, a 30 degree angle line because I want a 30 degree angle chunk of this kind of like think of it as like a, a slice of, of pie or a slice of cake so let's go ahead and drag out a new line I'm holding shift and I'm just going to drag out a vertical line now control T to bring up the transform bounding box and we're going to set the rotation to 30 degrees. Let me hit enter a couple times to set it. Now let's just kind of move it into place. We want this line to cross the center point of our document and we want to see kind of a, a slice of what this canvas would be at 30 degrees. So this space here is now a 30 degree angle or, or piece of this overall document. And it's very important that, that uh, we've got it set to we're, we're going to overlap this edge so let's go ahead and take our image and we have we, we're going to want to use a, a chunk of this as well so let's not get rid of anything over there but let's go ahead and press control T and kind of move this into place so maybe something like this okay so now in that space that we created we have plenty of color to play with so let's go ahead and hit enter to set that transformation and we want this edge down here to be softened because we want it to overlap so I'm gonna go ahead and take my eraser tool and I'm gonna set that eraser tool to be a fairly larger size so I'm gonna set it around 400 500 and the hardness is set to zero now let's go ahead and get rid of some of the excess here that overlaps our guide and our line here kind of like so so let's go ahead and we can toggle off the shape or the line shape that we made and we use the same process as before control alt T move the center point to the center of the document the rotation point let's set the rotation to 30 degrees and you can see it created a duplicate per usual Press enter a couple times. Now the magic, and this is probably going to bog my computer down, but control, alt, shift, the letter T, 
And here we go, and it's just going to create the duplicates of that layer with the rotation point set all the way around the center until we hit 360 degrees. Looks like we need one more. And we pick 30 because it's a number divisible by 360. So I'm going to go ahead and select all these layers and merge them together. And I'm going to hide the guide so you can see this. And there you go. You have kind of a kaleidoscope effect. It almost looks like a big flower. Let's see, let's try scaling this down to see what the whole thing looks like. And that is pretty cool. So there is a ton of things you can do with this tool. Uh, you can also set scale. So you can create kind of a, um, a golden spiral or kind of like a nautilus shell as you set uh, so as what you would do is that first one instead of when you set the rotation angle you also turn the scale down to like 90 percent and then the next uh, the next duplicates will also be 90 percent of the original size of the, of the original layer so it'll keep going in a big spiral and make some cool effects too so these were just a couple little uh, techniques i wanted to show you pretty cool that we started from something like this and turned it into something like that but it's fun to play with just basic shapes or do things with photos. So I hope you get a kick out of this. And it's a it's a really fun, addicting command in Photoshop. And it's been in Photoshop for quite some time. And that's just simply Control, Alt, Shift, and T. So have some fun. Uh, if you make a video response to, to this, definitely send it my way and I will post it. Uh, show me what artwork you create out of this. If you follow me on Twitter, I'd love to see replies and responses there as well. So have some fun. Uh, show me what you come up with, and um, I hope uh, you get some use out of it. All right. Take care. Later.